49DK. Wow. Angel Guts High School Coed. This is a new series of Japanese films where usually they have something to do with sexual assault. Don't worry though, it's not too harsh. It's more like porn than anything. Also, the Angel Guts films all involve a character named Nami. High School Coed, Red Classroom, Nami, Red Porno, Red Vertigo, Red Lightning, and finally, Angel Guts East Blue. They all sound pretty interesting, but Angel Guts East Blue is weird. It's all about some orange haired girl trying to save her village from some fishermen pirates. Can't wait to get to Angel Guts East Blue. I'm just kidding guys, but Angel Guts is a new series for us. Kind of like All Night Long and Guinea Pig. Listen, if you like Tokyo Avengers, you might like this video. It's about a biker gang actually, directed by Chunsei Sone, who has a history with directing various pink films. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue to go on. The movie begins with black and white rock and roll. It's kind of fire low key, like lowest of keys. Some young men are talking to each other. From their scary visage, you can tell that they are a biker gang. They're called the Crazy Diamonds. The three members are Kawashima, Kajima, and Sunglasses. Finally, the bikers start their trek down the street in pursuit of a car. Looks like they want to cause mayhem and circle around the car. How would you guys deal with this situation? Whatever the case, the bikers make the driver stop in a distant area and start breaking open the windshield, scaring the two inside, and drag them out of the car, beating them up. See, they broke the car anyway. I would've ran them over. Especially since they're gonna damage the car in the first place. The girl in the car runs away but gets Rey Mysterio to the ground. These bikers are despicable, and they take turns raping the woman. For a movie that came out in 1978, I'm surprised I didn't hear about this before. Feels like I'm watching a spin-off of I Spit On Your Grave. Seriously though, this rape scene is in the first 10 minutes of the movie, but you already hate these guys. The woman is more pissed off than scared though. She tells sunglasses over here to hurry up and get it over with, but he's sensitive about something. So instead he tries to kill the woman, but somebody, that's them. <laughs> Next, the bikers ride through the city causing mayhem. One of the bikers named Kawashima is the leader of the little rapist gang. There is one woman he cares about, his sister Megu. He beats on any random student trying to put the moves on his sister, like that poor sap there. Kawashima seems to have to deal with loan sharks. These are loan sharks under the- <laughs> These are loan sharks under the Dojima family. The kind of Yakuza family that would take away the debt Kawashima owes if he just allows his sister to be molested on camera. When he's not out terrorizing and raping women, he works at a factory. After getting paid, he comes to pick up Megu to treat her to an expensive steak dinner. On the way though, he talks to her about her growing up. He's scared of her attracting men like him. Anyway, on the way to eat, they see sunglasses here depressed or whatever. He points out to their friend Kojima, who happens to be about to rape some random girl. Kawashima saves her, but only because his sister is running down the damn alleyway. He wishes to protect his little sister from his secrets and his crew, and slaps Kojima so hard, he flew back to the Tokugawa period. Ugh, this is getting rough, some inner gang conflict. Remember that girl Kawashima saved? Nami. Her name is Nami. Later, Kawashima has a nightmare about Kojima raping his sister. He's running in place unable to stop him, but can't do anything as she ends up getting stabbed to death by him. He wakes up asking if this is a dream still. The visuals are pretty cool here. Later on, Kawashima runs into the girl he saved, Nami. Let's remember that just because he saved this girl doesn't mean he's not still deplorable. She gets away before anything can happen to her, which was dangerous on her part to climb over the railing onto the street. However, the person who picked her up is some random old guy. So they think Nami is doing some kind of compensated dating. But Spooky, couldn't that just be her dad or something? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I, I pictured that her dad would be so busy at work and wouldn't leave until everybody gets off. 
Anyway, Kawashima might have some hidden taboo interest in his sister Megu. He accidentally sees her changing and looks at her all weird before leaving in a hurry. There goes that Nami character again. She's about to be picked up, but the bikers all corner her away. They got her running all the way into a dark abyss. Kawashima was being forced to rape her and does it even though it's clearly troubling for him. Her pickup is waiting for her, whoever that is. It could be her dad, I don't know. Kawashima won't let anybody else rape her though, so he's back to conflict between him and his friends. He cares about her in his own kind of way, which differs from their usual philosophy of misogyny. Nami is not a typical rape victim and is just casually showering in the rain while they fight amongst themselves right there next to her. Another day, Kawashima's worst nightmare is starting to come into fruition. He learns that his sister is being friendly with Kojima. That is just something to remember, but sometime later, Kawashima continues to be interested in that Nami character. He wants to protect her from his crazy friend Kojima. They know he's in her house and start pouring fireworks smoke into the building but that was their plan to get access into the room, which was kind of smart in my opinion, I'm not even gonna lie. Kojima gets in and wants to rape her, but Kawashima is brawling with his partner. Nami herself though says that she hopes we all die, including her. So we soon get a memory of something, some businessman having sex with a girl, I don't know, I think that's a schoolgirl. Nami as a child was watching, evident by her pigtail, she's very young here. Seems like Nami's father raped her right after noticing her watching. She's been raped all her life. The person who owns this apartment comes in fighting Kawashima, but he loses. It's not clear to me who this man is. I don't know if this is her father or uncle or what because he seems just as young as her. Anyway, they escape from the apartment. Oh, and also that's the last time you see Nami. Here's Megu interacting with Kojima again. His permanent smile seems to imply he wants to harm her to spite her brother. He brings her to the clubhouse where he not only tells her the truth about her brother being a violent rapist, but he also attempts to rape her himself. This is the scene the movie was just waiting to splash into your face. Kawashima's worst nightmare comes to life and he allows her to escape from him. Kojima was pretty stupid for that. A lot of guys would be ready to murder if you did something to their little sister. I'm surprised Kawashima doesn't really do much after this. <laughs> Megu later runs into her brother who asks her who did this, but she doesn't want to speak because she knows he is just the same type as Kojima. He's just as bad. If this scene wasn't so dark, I think it would be fire seeing all their expressions. I don't know where, police stop Kawashima and Megu. They think he did something to her, since her clothes are all ripped, so they run off from the cops in a chase. Now I've never gotten sick from the rain, at least I don't think so, but a single raindrop gives people the flu in Japan, <laughs> according to anime. Kawashima is upset that his sister knows his true nature now. Unfortunately, he turns that anger out on her, beating her and hitting her with water. I'm not showing this, but he sees that she's bleeding down there. She's had sex before and says that instead that the stress of the sexual assault brought on a sudden period. After she goes to sleep, he departs. He left a letter to her saying he's turning himself in into the police. Really, he goes to a club where he tells his crew that he'll probably just turn himself in. While Kawashima is drinking, a random Yakuza member is dancing all crazy behind him. Alright, now it's about to be a fight between Kawashima and some rank and file Yakuza member named Kaicho Majima. Kawashima does pretty good until he gets stabbed in the guts twice. I guess, that, I guess that's why you can't mess with those Yakuza members. Kiryu with a dog walked him though, easy. Despite being stabbed, he beats the Yakuza member with a wood block, but it's not over yet. The Yakuza member doesn't want to be beaten and embarrass his family. Kawashima realizes he is out of his league here even though he clearly has won the battle of attrition. Sunglasses comes and stabs the Yakuza member in the back in adamant to protect his friend. Just like that, a Yakuza member is dead. The two friends shout in frustration about the predicament about being killers now. Not to mention the police are near. See, even if they get away, they will be hunted by the Yakuza family of the guy they just killed. 
Kawashima tells him to run away so he can take the blame and swear it was all just self-defense. That was kinda admirable of him, that's something Kiryu would do, but, but you're still deplorable. The police come to arrest him and he screams in anger as they don't listen to his pleas of this being self-defense. The movie ends with the film letting us know that he might go to jail for life if the judicial branch doesn't believe him. That will leave his sister defenseless against the Yakuza members they owe money to. All those women that he and his little friends raped, he didn't kill them. So I'm pretty sure some of them went to the police and told them that some young biker guy, oh, wearing this outfit, he raped me. So yeah, he just got uh, arrested for murder, but he's also might gonna get in trouble for rape as well. They might try to get him to snitch on his friends, I don't know. But yeah, he's in jail, but Megu, she's kind of defenseless now against the Yakuza members that they owed money to. But Megu is a new beginning. She is strong enough to figure something out. I'm really worried about Nami though. Her entire storyline was just so shoehorned in and forgotten. Otherwise, now that we gotten through this movie, let's talk about the most disturbed moment and most enjoyed moment and that spooky stuff. This movie was interesting, honestly. I liked the way it was filmed. The whole plot with Nami though, it was completely short. She is saved, raped, almost raped again, and then we find out that she had an awful childhood and you never see her again. And yes, the Angel Gus films all have a character named Nami, but they aren't the same Nami. Overall, this was a weird film that mixed in with the waves to where you can't notice it anymore. Most disturbing moment is probably the evil flashback of Nami when she was like 13 years old. Her father turning to rape her after she walked in on something. It's just like strange circus. Most enjoyed moment was probably the ending fight scene. I thought it was stupid at first, but it had a nice ending for these criminal characters. I'm sure Megu is all grown up with grandchildren now though. And her grandchild can go back in time to save the life of some girl he dated in middle school. And that's it. Here we have two other Japanese disturbing series, All Night Long and Guinea Pig. Check them out on your way out. If you like this video, click that like button so we can see what happens in Angel Guts East Blue. Subscribe if you want to see more messed up stuff. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.